In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I use Gig Performer 4 to teach piano live through Zoom and using it specifically to overcome some of the challenges that go with this territory, like for example, needing to monitor the piano sound but not your audio, having access to really quick transpose functions so I can demo things on the keyboard in one range and have it be heard in another, and of course being able to mute, unmute, um, and show only what's important to the student. Brett Pontecorvo here from LiveKeyboardist.com, where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of live performance software, with building a stable live performance rig, and with sound design. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so this is my gig performer teaching rack space. And as you can see, the front of this is designed and it's pretty meticulous. Everything has a specific function. Now, before I show you in the wiring view what I'm doing, I want you to remember that context is key. So nothing that is here that is included on the screen exists for no reason. And I wanna encourage you to do the same as you build out a set for teaching live, just build what you need and add as you find a desire for it. So let's start with the wiring. I'm gonna start in the global rack space. So one of the challenges that you have to overcome within teaching on an online context is you want the student to hear your voice, but you don't wanna hear your voice. Otherwise you get an odd echo back. And for the highest audio quality, you also don't want uh, to have the echo cancellation on, which means you need to have a way to gate your voice so that the sound of the dog's bark barking on the sidewalk or stuff like that doesn't actually come through. So I have my audio coming in from my interface here with two separate monitors. I wanna know what is my volume before my volume hits the noise gate and what is my volume after it hits the noise gate. And in this case, the noise gate is not active, so it's identical, but on the front, when I go to check out what's happening, you can see as I turn this up, I'm gonna get a different result. And so some amount of sound will not actually be passed through. And for this noise gate, I'm actually using a free reason rack effect called silencer. And this is just uh, you know, a really basic limiter so that things that I don't want to be passed through, background noise is cut out. And then I'm sending this audio to my other local rack space. That looks like this. So you'll see I've got this from global rack space here coming in on channel three, and it actually goes straight back to the global. The only reason I'm sending it locally is because I wanna be able to get this level and adjust the volume from the local rack space. Popping back over here, you'll see coming in on channel three, I have my vocals going to a couple different places. So to three and four, which is where I'm separating out just my voice, and my voice is being sent to channel five and six here. Now channel five and six actually represents an aggregate device. So you'll see if I go through here and I look at channels five and six on my outputs, five and six are the first two channels of a virtual audio driver called Black Hole. And that's actually what I set my students to be able to hear. I set that as my speaker inside of Zoom. Now my voice does not go to channels one and two, which is what I use to monitor my piano sound. So I can hear my piano, and then I have my piano sounds also going to Zoom. So this is my lesson feed. This is what people are gonna hear on Zoom, and this is what I am gonna hear. Now the reason that I also have everything running to five and six is I also want to know what is my total volume. So piano and voice combined will show up over here. So that is kind of the pathway of my voice. Now the pathway for my piano is quite simple, comes into contact, goes to this uh, audio mixer, which just gives me level control, goes out to my global rack space, where it is then sent to my monitors as well as to Zoom. So very simple. and. For my piano sound, I am using the grandeur, which is what I really like to use the most. I think it's the most versatile uh, piano sound, especially the most versatile one that I own. It has a good response, it feels good for lessons. So that's what I use that for. Now there are lots of other things going on in this panel, and something that happens in piano lessons a lot is I wanna demo an idea here, except it's written one octave higher. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could have a way to, um, 
transpose those keys easily without having to switch to Gig Performer. And to do that, I actually wrote a very short script. So when I hit D, um, this widget here is changed, which moves the global transpose up. When I hit this one, it moves it down. And when I hit C sharp, it brings it back to nothing. So that's just a little script that I wrote. And again, I didn't come up with this for no reason. This is all driven by context. Now, occasionally I want to show people a particular pattern or scale, but I don't want them to hear the piano sound. I just want to see it on the screen. So for example, maybe I want to show them the A major scale and I want to be able to hold down all of the notes within the A major scale without you hearing it. So you can see on the screen the different important notes that are involved without the mud of having to listen to a piano play all of those at the same time. So for that, what I've done is I've created a variation and these variations are just controlling buttons on those mixers. So you'll see for piano and voice, I've got this all the way up here for my keys volume and on only voice, the volume goes all the way down and it's muted. Now, of course, I don't wanna have to click on gig performer when I am teaching. So my top four keys, are mapped to these variations. So I can easily move between both, between just my voice, between only my keyboard, and completely muted. This means that I have control over what people are able to hear in Zoom from Gig Performer using just my keyboard, which is a really nice touch. Now, something else that goes on a lot in lessons, especially dealing with younger kids, is we need to teach time. And so what I've created here, I downloaded from one of the forums, is a visual metronome. So if I start time, you'll see everything light up on the appropriate beat. Now this is great, except that um, sometimes I have to teach song in different time signatures. So I used to go in here and have to click all of these buttons, which worked okay, but now what I'm actually able to do is adjust the time signature from these widgets. And I have the widgets reacting, again, through a little simple script to pull those in. So for example, if I'm teaching in 6-8 time, I can set it down here using these widgets, and then I can turn my metronome on. And I have a great visual representation for my students, especially my younger ones, to be able to see what they're playing so they can match their time uh, to whatever else is going on in their minds, see a visual breakdown of the beat. Now, certainly, last but not least, occasionally you have to use backing. And Gig Performer does have a built-in audio file player. And I always kind of deal with these on an as-I-need-it basis. So this is the audio, audio file player, and when I want to drop a song in, I just drop it in and I choose it manually per track. But the reason that I like to do it this way, rather than sharing sound through Zoom, is this allows me to control the volume individually and also scrub. So if I want a particular sound or a particular thing to be looped or find a certain section, I can do that really easily. Now, last but certainly not least, I have a giant pedal. And when I'm teaching people how to use pedal, Gig Performer's giant pedal widget really helps me do that. I can kind of say, hey, no pedal, no pedal. And they get a really beautiful, large representation of what they're supposed to be doing uh, along with their foot. So this is how I use Gig Performer to teach private lessons on Zoom. And I want you to let me know in the comments, are you using Gig Performer to teach private lessons? And if so, are you doing anything different? Perhaps there's something that I missed. And in either case, make sure you grab a copy of the Quick Synth Map, where I really go through how to tweak synthesizers to get great presets. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on LiveKeyboardist.com. Thank you.